fourth graders, it's Miss Lipiansky, and today we're going to make an optical illusion artwork. This uses a little bit of perspective and it also uses shading, which are things that we've learned so far this year. So start with a dot in the middle of your page. And with your ruler, you're gonna make lines coming from the center all the way out. And we're gonna make them somewhat evenly spread. You need to make enough lines so that there's an even amount of spaces. So this is one space. One, two, three, four. Okay, let's start counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Perfect. We have an even number of spaces. Now I'm gonna skip a section. I'm gonna alternate and make curves. Notice these curves are curving outward. I'm making three in each section. Now on the alternating sections, I'm gonna make the curves going in toward the point, and I'm gonna make sure that they line up with the ends of the other curves I've already created. This one goes off the page, that's okay. So this kind of makes it look like we're looking at um, something that has waving to it, like a flag. Or maybe a vortex. Oops, I made a mistake on that one. It's really important to make sure you're connecting them. Okay, now I'm gonna color in every other section with a black marker. So it's gonna be a little bit like a checkerboard. I outline first a section so that I can color in neatly. and slow, steady strokes so that I don't leave any white spaces. All right, so I'm not gonna do the ones next to it. I'm gonna do the one that touches it by the corner. Remember that if you lean your marker or tilt it to the side, you can use the flat side of the marker and it has more um, coverage that way. It colors it in faster and then you don't have to draw or color in quickly. When we color in quickly, it tends to get dry looking um, because we don't give it enough time to let the ink get on the paper. So it really is best to work nice and slowly. And I'll finish this up and show you the next step. Okay, so I've colored it in. You can see the paper is curling a little bit from the moisture of the marker. That's okay, when you're done with the project, you can put some books on top and let it sit for a day or two and that will flatten out. So I took my time coloring very neatly and now what we're gonna do is in each white section, we're gonna do some shading. So we learned with our value scale lesson that shading goes from light to dark. Now, if each of these white sections was bubbling up towards you, the top center of it would look lighter and the edges would look darker as they recede or go back. So starting from the center, we're gonna leave the center white 
And then I'm gonna move over a little bit and color very lightly. Look how far back my hand is on the pencil. That's how I keep it light pressure. I'm coloring that to the edge. And then I'm gonna darken it up a little. So I left it super light here. Over here, we're gonna make it a little darker. Even darker, and now really dark. And then you can smooth it out a little. Good, now we're gonna do the same thing going this way. Leave white space. Color lightly, then medium, and then darker. So now that looks really 3D and I can take my eraser and erase the highlight a little bit in the middle in case you accidentally smeared some pencil there. And when you're done with all of them, you can go back with the eraser and do that again. So I'll show you another one. I like to make a base of the light color first on all over the part that's going to be dark. Okay, and in the next slide, I'll show you how the whole thing looks completed.